Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the BERT model and fine tune it for any text classification task. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. Now, even though this name sounds complex, it is actually pretty simple. So now this name means that BERT is a transformer based encoder and it gives us representations of the input sentences that we give it. And this representation uses bi-directional context, which means for each word in your input sentence, it will look at words to the left and to the right of each word. So BERT is a neural network, which as its output will give us a representation of the input. This representation is just an embedding vector, which represents the input that it got. And we can attach a classification head to the final layer to use the representation, to use the meaning of the input and classify it for any text classification task. And that is what we'll see in this video. So without any further ado, let's straight away dive into the code. So in the first two lines over here, we are installing the libraries that we need. And I'll walk you through the different libraries that we're using as we use them in the code. So we import the libraries over here. And our first step is to load our data set. So for our particular problem, we will use the AG news data set from hugging face. And this is a data set of news articles and the output for each article is the category it belongs to. And there are four categories, world, business, sky tech and sports. So you can check out the data set over here. So we import the data set using the load data set function and I can print it over here. It has 120,000 rows in its training set and it has 7,000 rows in the testing set. And for each input, it has the text and the actual ground truth label it belongs to. So we are separately storing the training and evaluation data set over here. And the first step is to load our model. So for our purpose, we'll use the BERT base uncased model from Google. Base over here, it means that it's the base model, the smaller model. There is also a larger variant available of this. And uncased represents that it does not distinguish between small letters and capital letters. So next we load our tokenizer from the auto tokenizer class. And what this does is import the same tokenizer that the BERT model was trained on. And the job of a tokenizer is to take an input text like this and convert it into tokens. When I run this snippet of cell, you can see the output of this tokenizer function looks something like this. So it converted our input into 10 different tokens and each token is representing which word it corresponds to in the original vocabulary dictionary that it was trained on. For example, 101 will mean that this is 101st word in the original vocab dictionary. So this is what we get for each input from the tokenizer. It also gives something called as the attention mask and we can see it is once for every token in our input statement. So it means that the model has to pay attention to every token. When we are training this model with batches of input, we also have zero padding so that every input is of the same dimension. And in that case, some of the attention mask members will be set to zero to ignore the padding. But for now, for a single input, everything is one in this list. Next, we define a pre-process function, which basically applies the tokenizer to every input in our data set. So this function simply calls the tokenizer, takes an input statement, and we set the truncation to true. It means that whenever the input statement is more then the maximum context length that BERT was trained on, which is around 500, then it will truncate the input statement. And we also set padding is equal to max length, which means each input in our statement will be of the maximum length. If the length is short, we'll cover that by using padding. So over here, we take the train and evaluation data set and call the map function to apply this pre-process function to each input statement. So once this is done, the next step is to build our model architecture. Now what we want to do is we want to take the last layer of BERT and add a classification head. This classification will have number of neurons equal to the number of classes in the data set, which is equal to four in our case. So first we get the number of labels in our data set. This will be equal to four for our case. And we call the auto model for sequence classification. And we use the from pre-trained method so we can use the same weights of the original BERT model. We pass the model name over here and we set number of labels is equal to four 
which is defined over here. So this basically means that we'll have a classification head added with four neurons in our last layer. Now the BERT model is a very large model. It has 110 million parameters and we do not want to train the entire model. So in this line, we're iterating over the base model parameters and setting requires grad is equal to false. This means that the base model will not be trained. Only the classification head is going to be trained, which is 768 into four parameters. It is 768 because for each input, it outputs a vector of 768 dimension representing the input sentences meaning. Now, over here, I'm also unfreezing the pooling layers parameter in BERT. Now, if you do not know what the pooling layer is, just think about it as the last layer, which is actually summarizing the input and converting it into 768 dimension of vector. The reason I'm unfreezing the last layer is so that I have more parameters to train and tune my model. So this will make more sense to you when I actually show you the number of parameters which are available for training, which I do over here. Here, I'm simply iterating through all the model parameters and counting the parameters which have the required grad property as true. With this, I can see the total parameters, the trainable parameters and the frozen parameters. So over here, we can see that the model had 110 million parameters in total. However, we are only going to be training 590k parameters. This includes the classification head parameters and the final pooling layers parameters. Rest, everything is frozen. This allows us to train the model significantly faster as well. Just to give you an example of how the model gives its outputs, when I pass in an input statement, here is how the output of the model looks like. So we can see for each input, it is going to be outputting four numbers and the output which has the maximum probability is its final output classification. So these numbers are random because it has not been fine tuned yet for our task. So that is what we'll do in the next cells. Now, before we train our model, we define a compute metrics function over here, which allows us to measure the model's accuracy during training. So we are simply taking the logits and the labels. The logits is the prediction and the labels is the ground truth. And we're going to take the logits, which has the maximum probability and using the accuracy metric function to use the logits and label to find the accuracy. Once this is done, we can use this function during training to evaluate the accuracy as the model is training. Our next step over here is to define the training arguments. In the training arguments, we mentioned the output directory. We mentioned the eval and save strategy, which defines how often we are going to be evaluating the accuracy and how often will we save the model. We have defined the learning rate over here. You can increase or decrease the learning rate based on how your model is learning. We have a batch size of 16. The number of epochs is three. Again, if you have a larger data set, you might even need less epochs. Two to three is typically a good number. We add some weight decay for regularization. We load the best model at end, which is defined by accuracy. In each epoch, which one has the highest accuracy, that model will be loaded, which we can use at the end. Lastly, we initialize our trainer where we pass it the model, the training arguments, the train and eval data set, the tokenizer and the compute metrics function, which it uses to evaluate the accuracy on the eval data set. Finally, I can initialize training by using trainer.train. Now I've already finished this training in advance, so I don't have to wait in the video. And this is what the metrics look like. We can see with each epoch, the accuracy was increasing. And at the end, it seems to have plateaued around 89%. And over here, the training loss has even increased. So I think two epochs is a good number for our data set. If we want to increase the accuracy further, we can actually unfreeze the model so that the rest of the parameters also get tuned. So 89 accuracy is good for me for this data set. So I'm going to move ahead. The next step is how do we use this data set to make classification? So for that, I've over here, defined something called as a label map, which maps integer outputs like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 into its actual classes. So for example, zero means world in this case. So you have to have a map like this because your model will be outputting the numbers it was trained on. Lastly, I define a classify function over here, which takes an input statement, 
First, it tokenizes it using the tokenizer. The second step over here is it takes the tokenizer's inputs and places it on the same device, CPU or GPU as the model. This ensures that both your model and your input tensors are on the same device. Then I set a torch.nograd, which basically means that the gradients are going to be fixed and will not change. And then I pass the input to the model and get the output. The predicted class will be that particular item in my logits list, which has the maximum value, which I get over here. And I use the label map to get the corresponding class name for the integer output. So you can see that, so you can see over here, if I classify a statement and pass it the stock market record gains today, the output is business, which means it corresponds to business news. So with that, we come to the end of this video and that is how you fine tune a BERT model for any text classification task. And if there's anything else you want to see, do leave that in the comments and thank you for watching.